Hello and welcome to Unbounded Growth, a podcast that challenges you to grow and become a better version of yourself. My name is Mark Allen, and together with my friend Adam, we share thoughts and ideas from the books that we read and how they enhance our personal growth and development. We also host other readers and leaders. We learn from the experiences through our discussions. Our episodes here every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for listening in and let's grow together on Bonded Growth. All right, all right. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Mark Allen. Welcome to Unbounded Growth. I'm your host. And as always, we're my co-host, not my co-friend, but my co-host, <laughs> Adam Shabindu. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing well, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. It's been, uh, it's been a busy week. It's been a crazy busy week for me. I uh, had an exam coming up. I have an exam coming up. And um, uh, the preparation of it, sometimes you... You really wish you should not procrastinate. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel it's you funny now. that we we talked about all that last week, and, and I still had a few a few moments where I did not do what I was supposed to do when I was supposed to do it. But anticipation, anticipation actually helped me a lot to uh, to overcome some of these stresses that come with procrastination, not knowing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. The simple fact that I sat down on a Sunday with with, with Pramidi, my wife, just to to go through our calendars and to see what was coming up helped me anticipate the week of uh, this week, the uh, last week, uh, let's say last week, where I knew I was going to be to be really busy and I had a lot going on. I said, you know what, uh, this anticipation, just putting it on our calendar helps us to say no to certain things. Just looking at my calendar, it's like, I know I cannot do it. And that, that's, that's something amazing. Uh, in other life updates, uh, Borrow vacation camp. Started. Yeah, that's uh, that, that was uh, it was the f- last week was the first week of Bora um, youth camp or STEM camp. That was really yeah. exciting, actually. We uh, we had kids coding at ten. It, it it's amazing. We have these young little girls mm. never even used a computer before. Wow! Think about it. You are teaching mm. them the basic computer skills. Mm. And in one week, they are writing Arduino codes, and that's and that's amazing. And I'm excited actually um, to see now how uh, some of the some of like at the end of this week, some of the few things they will be presenting. Mm. Like they, I think they're designing a traffic light control, mm. and I'm excited to see that. It was, and we have I think I believe we have more girls than we have we have um, like we have more little girls than we have. Um, guys and, and boys so it's um it's really exciting to just see just the enlightenment in the face of those kids as they are learning how to code and it, it just uh, there's nothing better than that absolutely and you know I, I love saying that it takes one to raise one I've never I've never believed in self-made success people I believe that there's always someone somewhere who's had a cer- certain type of impact and with our technology just saving that type of impact in, in, in lives of people even here with unbounded growth just saving the impact that someone had in our lives at some point is very crucial uh, and very important uh, so um, as far as my current reading I'm still reading this book by uh, BJ BJ Fogg uh, Tiny Habit The Small Changes That Change Everything it's an amazing book you know it's one of those books I, I, yeah I could read it in a week but I'm taking my time because in, in the book itself he has a lot of exercises it's about habit creation changing your habits and challenging yourself and one of the things that I study as well is uh, our, our good friend Stefan Lupupu the 30 day challenge I'm doing a 30 day challenge to do 30 push ups every day. Wow, that's for amazing. The next, for the next 30 days. <laughs> that's interesting. So, so every morning, every morning I get, I get the blood flowing and it helps me be, uh, be more focused at work, you know. And that's, that's definitely amazing. So today is, is one of those, uh, we're starting on this new book. And this book is, is an amazing book. I have, I have this personal love with the author of the book we talked about it before if you already started the book do not do not hesitate to share with us what you've been learning from the book the 15 invaluable laws of growth yeah and and and, and just in that perspective actually uh before we just uh, directly jump to that uh i've looked i've looking i've looked at a few at a few books this this past week hmm. that um that have been very inspiring i I've been I've been reading the voltage effect. Uh, I'm halfway through the book. I've it's just been a, a good 
kind of a, a game changer for me mm -hmm. when it comes to scalability. So the the book is by John um, John A. List. Mm -hmm. uh, John List used to be the uh, chief economics officer for Uber, right. but now he's a chief economics officer for Lyft. And uh, he went from a company to a competitive competitor. <laughs> so when um, when Uber was really struggling, I believe, yeah. and their CEO had to step down and right. things like that. And I think around, I believe, 2018 mm -hmm. or 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he had to change companies. But he talks about the voltage effect. Mm -hmm. uh, he say how to make good idea great and great idea scale. Mm. One of the things that uh, we have been kind of a, one of the challenges we've been having at Bora is designing something that we can really scale at high level and not just in scale it in, in with the means we have in Congo. Mm. Imagine in an area where we have no manufacturing center, mm. everything from sugar to candies in Goma, they are imported. Imported, yeah. So you have no manufacturing facility and you're trying to create products, mm -hmm. which is a really crazy challenge. So now we are kind of like thinking, where do we orient our business in such a way that we can scale? And being able to learn from join a list is giving really interesting tips on how you scale your business mm -hmm. from just uh, how do you actually know that your idea can scale? Mm -hmm. First of all, and how do you scale that idea? I've been going through the book like at three hours per day. It's like, it, it's, uh, it's just been when I start the book, I feel like not stopping, just keep going. The only thing that's stopping me, the time constraint, because mm. I'll take care of other things. Um, the other thing that I try that, that I've been doing a lot from the previous series that we did in the book is just writing my goals down. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, crucial. Every week yep. now I have set goals. Actually, I've, I've, I, what I do now, I, I'm, mm. I'm doing even more uh, following Brian Tracy's advice mm. on, on that aspect of things. What I'm doing is I have my, um, right in front on my cubicle, I have my goals right on my, on my, uh, one of my cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then I cross it. When I, I finish one thing, I cross it in red. Well, it feels great. It feels really good. <laughs> it really feels great. So after I'm done with that, like for example, last, um, on, on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, I share that whatever my accomplishment, I take a picture of it mm. and I share it in our group chat as a group, in my lab group chat. And then you right. get like the hearts, right? You're, like a lot of people are, are reacting to that from like if people are encouraging you. And actually I was feeling a little bit down um, because my, I, I, I hit five out of seven mm -hmm. and I, I had seven goals and I only hit five. And I, I kind of put just like a sad face emoji on, next to it right. and uh i was just kind of feeling low and my my boss um, dr jones she looks at it she was like what out of seven goals you got five right and just the positivity she brought after she mm -hmm. kind of just lift me up telling me that that is really great out of uh, those were no easy tasks that mm -hmm. you had to get done and you completed five out of seven mm -hmm. and the two that i didn't do i, I didn't write um my book I was supposed to write three pages on my book and I didn't. And I was supposed to write also like starting writing my dissertation proposal. Mm -hmm. I didn't either. But then I was like, yeah, the, the following week I will, I will start doing it. And then this past week I actually got on, I wrote my three pages on my book. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of my things done. I got a lot of the training for that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I got it done. I trained my students mm -hmm. on the technology I was supposed to do. It took us so many hours of trying it, trial and error and failing. Mm -hmm. But at the end, um, last Friday, we we're able to actually to successfully fabricate the technology we we're, we we're supposed to build. Mm -hmm. And now we, I'm having him, my, one of my students, now build it like... Um, with the design is perfect now. The manufacturing of the sample was good. Mm -hmm. Now we only have to now kind of bring it bring it up to scale. Now co make it correctly. So it's um and he's excited about it. He's one of the great. Uh, his name is Durga. Uh, he's he's really amazing. He's been doing really great work. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, he's a few things that uh, happened during the week. So it's kind of was a very eventful week. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really great. And it, it makes, you know, it's, it's a great feeling when you accomplish something or even when you help someone accomplish something. I feel, I feel like when I help someone accomplish something, the joy I see in them is much greater than the joy I have when yeah. I accomplish something <laughs> myself, you know. So it's always, it's always great to uh, to have people around you that you can help or live a, a, a life with a bigger purpose. 
a, a bigger vision, something that's much greater. Just that's just much greater to itself. And I think um, uh, BJ BJ Fogg talks about it about the trap of motivation. Sometimes we feel like I need to be motivated in order to do ABC, but the reality is that most of the times motivation starts after you start doing whatever you're supposed to do so discipline we always go over motivation and yes we all need some some type of motivation some type of adrenaline to get us going to get us doing something but if we are only counting on motivation to get things done in life there are so many things that we we will never get to to accomplish and i'm, I'm also still reading the book uh, by bishop jakes uh so he talks about how to the analogy or the story of the book is about how to fly a plane and how 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 the uh, the first plane was built and going against the current and and he's he's starting the the whole idea is an an entrepreneurship book which it compares building a plane to building your own company to building your own vision and one thing I liked what he mentioned in that book is that yeah uh, he, he said uh, he tried to go on TV. But things were not working the way he was expecting them to work. And then he said, I quit on my own accord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still have control of my bird. I quit. I was yeah. like, no, this is, this is not working. And, and, and I loved it because you look at someone like him who is as successful as him. And you think that everything has always worked out for, for him or his whole life. And sometimes that's just not the reality. People go through a lot of struggles before their ideas are born, before their ideas become what they need to become. So, with that being said, John Maxwell. John Maxwell with the 15 laws of growth. John Maxwell was among, I think, the first authors that I read. And I think I talked about this before. I was in Uganda, Kampala trying to to learn english and i'm learning english and one one, one of my teachers told me hey you know if you want to grow your vocabulary read more i was like oh yeah that's that's a great idea all i did was two hours of english a day um maybe four hours of school a day and the rest of the day i was at home i was like okay what what else can i do i started reading books so i go on this on this book street it's called a book street. i like to call it the book street because you have all these vendors in uganda they literally just lay their books on the floor and as you're walking, you, you can pick books. And they are fairly, fairly cheap. Like you'll find great books that would cost you, that would easily cost you $15 in the United States. We cost you maybe a dollar or maybe two dollars in, in Kampala. So I started buying books, just random books. I remember I saw the title of this book. I believe the title was Reposition Yourself. I saw the title because the books were kind of, the way he placed the books, he placed the books one on top of the other. So I saw the title of one book, but the name of the author was different. And the name I saw was John Maxwell. So I come back the next day because I didn't have money. I come back the next day to look for a book by John Maxwell called Reposition Yourself. I look all I could, I couldn't find the book. They said they just do not have any title by John Maxwell called even Google. It was like, well, John Maxwell is never written a book with that title I was okay can you just find me any book by john maxwell <laughs> i just want i don't know who john maxwell is i just want to read it gives me this book it's called leadership gold and leadership gold was one of those meditational books where you read one page a day five days a week 50 50 weeks a year i read that book within two weeks so i was like no i'm not i'm not doing the one page a day <laughs> I, I just wanted to read every day he was talking about leadership and i was the idea of leadership i kind of knew what it was but it was so foreign to me i started reading about leadership and that's in 2011 that's when i started falling in love with the concept of leadership i started understanding why so many companies uh, were not succeed, succeeding why so many businesses were struggling and i thought to myself man it all comes down to this one ingredient. Yes, there are other things that may, may, may matter, but I think more than 50% of the failures about businesses, countries, and, 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 and school system, it comes down to leadership. So I said, you know what? I'm going to devote my life to learning about leadership, to teaching people about leadership. So I started reading this book by John Maxwell. And, and if you've read any book by John Maxwell, you just want to read the next book he, re he writes. That's true. <laughs> he, he's just one of those writers. He, he's so His books are captivating. He, he capture your attention. And even the book that we, we, we start reviewing today and for the next few weeks, when you read this book, you, you're tempted to underline everything he says. And, and I start reading this book. Now, this book, The 15 Laws of Growth, comes out in 2015. And in 2018, I'm already in the United States. 
I started an internship at this company. I come across this book right off of, of Amazon, just looking for books by John Maxwell. And I read the 15 laws of growth. I read it the first time. I read it the second time. And I still felt like I still have a lot to learn from this book. And now that I started reading again this book last week, and I realized that if you want to be successful in life, there's one thing, one thing you need to do all day, every day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, you need to grow. Absolutely. And that's pretty much how he introduces the book yep. at the very beginning. He talked mm. about the concept of potential. Mm. And uh, it, I, I really love this book. It, I read it twice. So it's, uh, <laughs> I read it twice. And as I mentioned last week, uh, in, in, in the episode last week, that I read it and I kept on reading it. And, and just like that, it has this transformational effect directly on me and my, on my personal growth. So now I am taking it as like a personal book as one of those things that uh, I am just directly applying the things from this book to my growth and mm. to my every perspective of my growth. Mm. Either it's um, my spiritual growth even. This book has a lot of pointers that can actually help. And even the few laws we're going to talk about today mm. uh, can really help you within like your spiritual life. Mm. If you're looking for financial success, this book, again, is offering ways for you to grow in that perspective mm. whatever it is that you are looking for to grow and he, he talks about the idea of unfulfilled potential mm. he said that everyone has potential within mm. them mm. but some people just decide not to use that potential and at mm -hmm. the end of the day if you pass you pass and you did not achieve or reach your purpose mm. on this world you have just wasted a whole life and it's funny because that, that you even talk about passing away, like, you know, assuming that everybody will live till their 70s and 80s. But when you don't do, when you don't like what you are doing, or when you're doing something that is not fulfilling you, it always feels like there's something missing inside of you, right? And it doesn't have to be that, you know, you don't have to... Uh, to love your job and fall in love with it to be to 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 do it no but if you want to accomplish great things at what you are doing you need to fall in love with the process you need to fall in love with what you are doing and the only way that bill gates elon musk or mark zuckerberg or Warren buffett became what they became and they became so good at what they are doing is because they loved it and, and of course, we have a shallow definition of success in this world. We think about money all the time. But someone like Mother Teresa, who did so much good to, to the world, or Muhammad Gandhi, or, or maybe Martin Luther King, and you think about those people, what's so, what's so different about them? They were so passionate about what they were doing. And, and once you discover whatever is it that you want to grow in, whatever is it that you want to do, now comes the second process. You need to grow in it. And, and, and John Maxwell... Start this book by this story says, they asked him one question. Do you have a growth plan? And, and that's the first question I'll ask you today. Whatever is it that you're doing, do you have a growth plan? Yeah, and it doesn't matter in which aspect of your life. It can be your physical health. Mm -hmm. It can be your mental health. Mm -hmm. It can be your finances. It can be your business growth. Mm -hmm actually or it can just be your daily life do you have a plan that uh to become a different person in five years and we're not talking about here oh, on biology right yeah, um yeah. because of course one thing that is for sure that is guaranteed is that yeah you won't look the same five years from now or 10 Absolutely years from now <laughs> that's uh, even if you have the best genes we can ever imagine 15 years, still, from, today, 15 years you, from today, you, you look, still, you are, yeah, you look a little older. That is something <laughs> that you can never avoid. And, and it's not, it's, it's something that's just happened. It's no, um, it's, like, you, it's not really accidental, I don't want to say accidental, but it's, it's something that we all go through. It, you know, um, 
you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, let's let's jump into the first law because you're already talking about some assumptions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> quote something real yeah. quick here before before we jump there. Something you say here, you say that um, again, if you are listening to this podcast, um, and I'm I'm gonna kind of just take in that perspective instead of saying like reading here, I'm gonna mm-hmm. talk about this podcast. You say like since you are listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. I believe you have the desire to reach your potential. Mm-hmm. So the question becomes, how do you do it? I have no doubt that the answer is growth. Mm. To reach your potential, you must grow. Mm -hmm. And to grow, you must be highly intentional about it. Mm. And that leads us to the first law, which is the law of intentionality. And and let me quote as well something here in the introduction. and say that you cannot change your life until you change something you do every day. So the secret of your growth will not be hidden, even the, the law of intentionality, it won't be hidden in what you will do someday or what you will accomplish someday. It's hidden in what you do every day. So the growth process, it's a daily thing. It's not something like I do once a week. Yeah, you can do it once a week or once a month, but you need to adapt and do it every day. So the law of intentionality, I love this because it's contrary to what we know in science, in biology, is that growth doesn't just happen. As opposed to, to your physical growth or aging, you know, aging, it, it happens. Yeah, uh, you cannot avoid to you age. Can't avoid, you can't avoid <laughs> uh, there's it. Some you know. ac- there's some research by um, Jeff Bezos' company. Yeah. They are trying to figure out how to reverse um, the dynamics of growing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to die yeah, while they're still trying to figure pretty it out. Pretty much, because I don't <laughs> think there is any way you can, you can kind of reverse that. I, I mean, uh, a lot of things are possible, but that one, I don't think you can just act against nature. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't stop yourself from growing. And that's why, you know, I, I love to encourage people when you have a great idea, start on it. Because 15 years from today, whether you start or not, time will pass. <laughs> you know, so whatever it is that you want to do, just don't need. But when it comes to personal development, growth doesn't just happen. Does doesn't just happen. And 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 the problem with 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 most people today is is the first thing that John Maxwell talks about in the law of intentionality is the assumption gap. We have we have this assumption that okay, so if I just stay at my job for the next ten years, then you know I'll advance in my career. It's not guaranteed. You can be there for 10 years in the same position. You can be there for 15 years in the same position. If you are your own boss, the question I like to ask people, if you're your own boss, would you promote yourself? Exactly. And if <laughs> you would, why, why would you promote yourself? If you are your own parent, would you reward yourself? If you are your own boss, your own entrepreneur, if you are God, would you bless yourself for what you're doing, the, the effort and the time that you're putting in, into what you're doing? Yeah, and this and this is just projected to our very first episode when we talked about the twelve pillars, hmm. where Jim Rohn is saying that uh, personal development, in this case here, hmm. is a key for you to actually become successful, and bringing it, projecting it to uh, what. Uh, John Maxwell is teaching here. Mm-hmm. He's saying that growth and growth is personal development. Yeah, growth of the, the person you are reaching your full, tr- attempting mm. to reach your full potential is what's going to make you stand out mm. or separate you from um, basically everybody else. And going back to just the the, the um, that's the assumption assumption ga- gap that is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that he actually put out here is he, he, he's putting the fact that um, he say like, I had a strategy I, when after he he had met um, Kurtz <laughs> Kurtz Camperman. Yeah, and he said that I had a strategy: hard work. Hard work. I hope that I will get uh, it will get me where I wanted to go, but working doesn't guarantee success. Mm. And hope is in a strategy. <laughs> so that is actually one. It's so true that when I read that part, it hit me. I'm like, oh man, I, you can work as hard as, as possible. I, I had a job um, and I'm going to share, be sharing more about this um, a lot, especially when it comes to the law of awareness. Mm. I'm going to be talking a lot because 
the law of awareness, even the law of intentionality and the, the law of awareness is one of the things that in my life has become, has been just very, um, very big. But going back to just uh, law of intentionality here, um, just, I had a, I had a position, I, I, I had a job where I had a really interesting job. The money was good. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I saw, actually, I realized within the organization is that the position I was at, mm. me who was beginning in that position, mm -hmm. and the senior engineer, <laughs> we were doing the same it's job. job. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, how long have you been in the company? Five years. How long have you been in the company? 20 years. In fact, we are on that field. I just got there. I am teaching the, the guy who has been there for 20 years. Mm. I'm telling them that because, okay, a lot of them have been so passive about laws of physics mm. that they just, uh, okay, they plug and chuck and they, and they know like if they plug and chuck this way, it's going to work. Right. And sometimes the physics comes against you. Mm. So, but they all stop growing. They all stop learning. They all give up. And when you ask them how much they're earning, like $200,000 a year. Mm. And like, yeah, with 200K, like what else do, do that somebody wants in life? Like that's pretty good for them and they will stay there. Exactly. And, and and that's one danger. You know, it's not only with jobs, even with school, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people have not read a single book after graduating from school, from college. I remember meeting a lady in a store and, uh, you know, I asked her what she, she had done in life. Uh, she told me, yeah, she was a college graduate. And so I was suggesting to her, like I suggest to most people, hey, if you check out this book, I think you can learn a few stuff from it. And she told me, you know, Mark, I really appreciate the thought, but I'm not reading books anymore. I've had enough books in college. And, and that's the idea we have that, you know, at some point I stop learning. At some point when I get my PhD, then that's it. And what we don't understand with growth, personal development and growth when you stop growing, you actually start regressing. Absolutely. Because the world is moving and, and things are passing you by. And you don't realize that, okay, what was, what was important or what was you know, up to date in 2000, today is probably obsolete. And people are like, okay, your technology works, but not in this age. It's like, you know, you're going to improve your tapping tapping machine skills like how are they going to help you today if you cannot use a program like microsoft excel or microsoft word so it's important to keep to keep on growing so the assumption gap says that i assume i'll grow no growth doesn't happen that way you need to be intentional about it the second thing it talks about is the knowledge gap and we won't talk about all the assumption uh, all the assumptions that, that it talks about it talks about eight of them we just we just brush over a few of them but this one is also important I don't know how to grow. And I think that's the one that baffled me the first time John Maxwell talked about growth in one of his, of, of his present books that I read. He said, you need to grow. And in my head, I was like, okay, I need to grow. So how do I do it? I remember back then, he had mentioned something about personal leadership, uh, personal development and leadership growth. He said that what he did back then was he read a book on leadership every month. That's when I, I took the resolution in my life to read a book on leadership. But that didn't help a lot because, yes, it did help a lot in terms of leadership. But in other areas of my life, you know, like keeping my weight, maintaining my weight on a certain level or learning more about my field, I was like, okay, how am I going to keep up reading a book on leadership and doing all the other things that I wanted to do? So the knowledge gap can also be a problem when you do not know how to grow. So whatever your field is, where do you want to be in five years from today? Yeah. And what are the things you can do today or you can do every day that will make you that person that you want to be in a few years from today? Yeah. And it, it, com it comes down again here to uh, the, the being intentional about, about your growth. Mm. Because something that, uh, uh, that he mentions in the book, and, and, and to me, I, I keep on thinking about it, um, is that a lot of people think just like yeah um people go with experience right mm -hmm. that it's something i've always argued with my dad about is that he would he would pull up his his okay i have experience and i've been here longer i've known this longer than you and so on and then i'll, I'll disagree with him 
I will go like, yeah, that does that doesn't really prove much. <laughs> and we'll, we'll kind of just go back and forth because I'm like, yeah, um, you've been doing it for so long and it's not improving. It's not going anywhere. So you have to leave room for me to actually uh, to actually go there. And John Maxwell is saying that, yeah, you can actually even be learning. You can actually be doing something and failing at it. Mm-hmm. And that's actually in its fourth law where you talk about reflection. Mm. So like, yeah, you can be failing so many times and then you are not really getting anything out of it unless you're actually intentional about your growth. Something he mentioned here, he says, many people learn only from the school of hard uh, knocks. <laughs> hard knocks, yeah. <laughs> Difficult experiences teach them lessons the hard way mm. and they change. Mm. But sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse mm. but if imagine now you went through hard things and you are forced to actually make changes mm. and you don't know you start becoming the worse than you actually were before exactly. that experience you know one of the things that i like uh, mentioning that about people learning how to score of, of hard knocks is that listen here's the reality life is too short to learn from your mistakes life is too short if you have to learn from your own mistakes for your own life by the time you're 40 or you're 60 or you're 70, you have probably haven't even learned half of the things that you need to learn if you keep on learning from your own mistakes. A man once said that wise people learn from their own mistakes. Wiser people learn from other people's mistakes. And the wisest take a class on other people's mistakes. <laughs> Pretty much learning so that they don't, they don't repeat the mistakes of others. Uh, the law of timing, we're going to skip over it, but the law of timing pretty much says it's not the right time to begin. As we said before, 15 years from today, whether you start or not, time will pass by. So never wait until the time, which leads us, of course, to the fourth, to the fourth, uh, to the fourth and the fifth one, uh, the fourth and the fifth one that says, you want to be, it says that you're afraid to make mistakes. If, if you want to start learning today, you want to start growing today, you're afraid that, will I do it the right way? I'll, I'll give you a quick example in our church. Our church, we've been trying to, to raise money to buy a new building. We realized that we've made a mistake for the last 15, 20 years, and we want to stop running. When, when, when we brought up a proposal to how, on how to raise money, you know, I remember presenting that proposal and a very intelligent man, financially intelligent person, looked at me and told me, Mark, thank you for your great job, but this is not going to work. Well, I, I asked him politely, I was like, but so if this is not going to work, what is going to work? He gave me a suggestion for the size of our church and what we do. I knew that was not going to work either. I told him, you know what? Let's get started. He said, we can't get started until you have, you know, you have a full proposal, like people have signed on it, you've had your blessings on it. I was like, listen, if we're waiting until we have all those documents, within three years, we'll still have zero dollar to move. Uh, Thank God. I mean, four years later, we still don't have the list of everything that he had mentioned that we need to have before we start raising funds. But we are already about $87,000 in raising funds. So if you wait until the time is perfect, if you wait until, if you're so afraid that you're going to make mistakes, you can only learn by doing. It's so hard to learn when you're not practicing. It's so hard to learn. Like, Adam, you know this, that you can have all the theory about testing something but until you sit on the machine and start testing it, you don't know what works. Nobody and what cares work. about it. Exactly. Actually, you can you can bring up the best hypothesis there is, mm. but unless there is data for you to actually make that into a fact, mm-hmm. nobody cares. You can talk as much as possible. Right now, I'm actually under pressure. Um, it's a, it was a blessing and again a curse at the same time. <laughs> I got selected to go present my work at the biggest conference in the world for biomedical engineers. Mm. Uh, it's called the BMES conference. It's mm. the uh, Biomedical Engineering Society. Mm. We it's gonna this time it's com- it's coming to Texas, so it's it's gonna be really big. It's it's in San Antonio, so I submitted my work there and I was just iffy about it. I was like, yeah, my boss was like, yeah, yeah, everybody should submit. And I was like, yeah, Adam, yeah, you got to do it too. My subject, whenever I say, I, I, I pronounce the word or whatever, I tell you what I do. Mm. Everybody goes, 
wow i want to learn about it i want to know about these mm. things like what is that technology that can make such an automation like it's amazing when you, biology and automation a lot of them they don't work together so by this guy is saying that he's gonna put automation and biology in mm. one sentence and they it's gonna work mm. automation and the brain in one um in one sentence right um when it comes to technology so mm -hmm. it's um it's it's my subject is pretty impressive uh, when it comes to my work mm. so i made one of the i was not i was just like yeah i'm gonna just submit this just the way it is and because my boss is, is said we should mm. i did and uh i put together i mean of course it has to be presentable and really nice written and everything so mm. i put i put in my best effort i submitted it and I was I said I'm gonna target the highest possible that way they're gonna just reject it. And whatever <laughs> they do, I'm gonna be like, yeah, at least at least I sent it there, right? right. Um, <laughs> plot twist. Submitted it there just by the topic of it. Well, they were like, yeah, maybe they won't fit it for an oral presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you have a poster presentation. Mm. Poster presentations actually sometimes can be worse than oral presentation. Mm. Or a presentation, of course, you're going to be the guy speaking. You got only 15 minutes, maybe you speak, 30 say minutes. Whatever you need, and you, you finish, you're done. <laughs> and the poster, you stay there all day. You might meet 200 people. Exactly. So uh, you might embarrass yourself 200 times, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So, right. Yeah. Or a presentation, you can give it and get it over with. Right. So now I'm working on a, on, on a crazy deadline of getting a lot of my stuff done, producing a lot of data because. Uh, I, I won't just be showing people hypotheses right, over there. Right. I'm going to be showing them real facts and real data. So I have to get into action and I have to be very intentional mm. about getting it because now I have something to lose. Yep. And, and that's that's where, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Go Go with what you have. And while you're making those mistakes, you can learn from your mistakes and you can improve from them. As a matter of fact, uh, Robert Schuller, if you've never read a book by Robert Schuller, I think the, the title is Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. It's also one of the first books that I read in English, an amazing book. He talks about, uh, he used to, he talked about before, I think he passed away, but he talked about how he came with the idea of building a, gla a glass cathedral and the challenges that he went through. And uh, it's an amazing book. He actually said, what would you attempt to do if you knew you won't fail? What is that that you attempt to do if you know you won't fail? Which leads us again to the next gap. Maybe I struggle, I struggle with this the most is the perfection gap. I have to find a way, the best way before I start. Here's what I've learned about perfectionism. Do what you need to do now. And as you do it, you will perfect your skill. I remember starting as an MC or even getting into the sphere of public speaking. You want to start on Monday and sound like John Maxwell on Tuesday. And you sometimes forget that. We sometimes forget that the guy has been doing it for the last 48 years. And, and here's the reality. If you do something for 48 years and you're not good at it, maybe it's time to switch careers. Maybe it's time to do something else. So perfection is a myth. Getting The best way to get better at what you do is to start doing it. Until you start doing it, you cannot improve on it. And then he also brings us to another one, the sixth gap that he talks about, the inspiration gap. I, yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's actually the biggest one for me. Actually. I don't feel like yeah, that. Um, I, I, think I, was, I think I was mentioning at the beginning here yeah. that um, basically the reason why I did not accomplish my seven out of seven goals mm. for the week it was not because I did not have time for me to accomplish them because mm. people always blame like, yeah, I was busy. The reason why I was actually sad mm. was not because I did not have time to do it. Okay. it because I did have the time actually to do it because I allocated when I put seven goals, I also set deadlines and I also set the time mm. on my calendar on when everything should be done. When I should write my three pages of my book, all of that time is allocated on my schedule. But I didn't do it. Why didn't I do it? Because I didn't feel like, do, like doing it. And one of the things that like, I had, I was supposed to do data analysis. Mm. And um, a lot of my data, I collected data. 
But since I looked at the result, mm. I just saw them and they were not looking like exciting and inspiring and all of that. And you lost the motivation. Yeah, I was just like, uh, maybe. and actually I have to go back to them because I, I, <laughs> I, I do, because you, in science, you never know. I, I might be discarding data or that I might be not looking be, at it. And, right. and then somebody else can look at it with a different lens, mm -hmm. uh, especially the specialist. I'm not a neuroscientist. I only collect the data and um, I'm still trying to become a neuroscientist, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have to grow. So I have to keep reading and I have to keep getting better and better at, at neuroscience and so on because it's my part of it's a part of my growth plan. Right. But um, I'm not as great yet. Mm. And uh, sometimes uh, the neuroscientist will be looking at things and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I didn't see that. And so I, I probably should have go to collect those data. But one of the things that I've actually struggled with, and this book is giving me a lot of tips for, is that um, the, the, the thing about, about motivation and not motivation to do that task, mm. to do that specific thing. There are a lot of other things, and especially the least exciting mm. part of my work is, I mean, the, yes, the greatest reward if I do it, mm -hmm. but since it's not flashy, Mm. This is not something I will go brag about pretty much. I mean, people who know me, I, I, I love sh to showcase a lot of the things that I do. Right. But so so this is not something that I can actually, you know, it's not popping. It's not like the, the greatest hit. Mm -hmm. It turned, it, sometimes it turns to be like, yeah, I, I tend to, to challenge, to, it, it challenges to me a lot it, yeah. um, to get it done. There's something I'm going to actually give here, uh, like a tip that he, he gives in this specific case. He say, mm. we have news for you. Motivation is not going to strike you like lightning. Mm. And motivation is not something that someone else, nurse, doctor, family member can bestow or force on you. Mm. The whole idea of motivation is a trap. Mm. Forget motivation, just do it. Just do it. And I think that's that's what, that's my next move. I, I think it, it comes down to that, especially you know when you're trying to uh, to lose weight. Uh, and sometimes I struggle to to keep my weight down. I'm, I'm not I'm not overweight, not terribly overweight. But at the same time, I always say to myself, if I don't control my weight today, 20 years from today, I'm going to regret the choices that I'm making today. And sometimes, most of the times, you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like keeping up with your diet. You don't feel like going to work for half, a, half an hour a day. You don't feel all those stuff. But one thing it says here, it says that you are more likely to act yourself into feeling than to feel yourself into action. It's, there are more chances that when you start doing it, you are actually going to keep on doing it. Which again, brings us to another point. The seventh one he talks about is the comparison gap, which you know, sometimes we all struggle with it. Whatever failed you in, there is almost always someone who's better than you. And if they're not better, better than you at exactly what you do, they're better than you at something else <laughs> that you're doing, you know. And 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 you, you see that all the time. So uh, try to shove that away, you know, because if you keep on growing today, within the next 10 years, you are going to be the person that you've always wanted to be. But if you keep on thinking to yourself, well, this person is always better than me, the only person you need to compare yourself to is yourself. Definitely. How better are you today compared to yesterday? How better will you be tomorrow compared to today? But if you try to compare yourself to someone else, maybe that person will always be better than you. So are you going to give up on you because that person is always the best? Or are you going to grow yourself until you become the best version of yourself? And the comparison, the, 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 this comparison gap here is, uh, we struggle with it a lot as PhD candidates, actually, mm -hmm. because um, compared to everybody else, we kind of, um, we, we get it, we get to start life a little later than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody we graduated with who, like who got a bachelor degree with, especially for engineering. I mean, other fields, they need a PhD to actually be something. Yeah. In engineering, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you need a, yeah. you need a PhD, PhD in psychology, psychology yeah. to, 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 get, to get a decent life. Yeah. In engineering, we don't. Mm -hmm. We need a bachelor degree. And some people, you actually just need a technical program um, yeah. of engineering. And then you go get the experience wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And for PhD, and then you look at your friends and people who you went to school with, you are better than them mostly. Because if you're following a PhD, mm -hmm. it means like academically, you are excellent. Uh, a lot of us. So you now get to this position where 
now you start comparing yourself to them. Like they are getting married and they are reaching these two and three things. They are doing this or they bought the new car. They did that. And you struggle with it a lot and it does not allow you to grow. It just pulls you back. And that pushes us actually to the next one here, that um, the expectation gap. I thought it will be easier than this. You know, one thing I, I like in this expectation gap where, where you mentioned, they say people create their own luck. It says preparation in bracket growth plus attitude plus opportunity plus action, meaning doing something about it equals luck. A luck. A lot of times we, we think that you know, overnight success exists. Unless you won the lottery. I do not think overnight success exists. As a matter of fact, I think I read a quote uh, by T.J. Jakes in his book, Soar, last week. He said, uh, it actually takes 15 years to be an overnight success. Where people are only seeing the result of your work. But they don't see the work that you've put in to become who you who 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 you are today. And and the expectation gap is that when we start on this growth journey, it's challenging. I love to watch comedy. I love to listen to comedian. I believe they, they are great public speakers in the way they connect with the audience and the way they connect with people. And I was listening to uh to, to some of the comedian like uh Capella or, or John John Stewart. He actually got the Mark Twain Prize, and he was he was explaining about how he started comedy. And you walk into this venue, you see this tool in the front. You say, "One day I'm going to be sitting in that." And so many nights you have rejection, and sometimes you want to give up. And 15 years, 20 years down the line, you've made yourself a name, and people are respecting you, not understanding. You have, you probably just started cracking jokes around your siblings, and they thought you are not even funny. And sometimes you move to the next <laughs> level, and people are still doubting you. So in everything that you do, sometimes it's not about the people. It's not about people who are around you. And sometimes you get discouraged by yourself, by your peers, by the people that you trust. But what's most important is that it may not be as easy as you think. But if you keep going at it, you will eventually get there. Yeah, and, and just to push, kind of to, to just wrap this up, of, and, um, and, and of course, this book, you can, you, can, you can get it, and he gives a lot of tips mm -hmm. in the book on how to actually develop that intentionality, how to be very intentional. But to just wrap this up, or this law of intentionality, there is a mm -hmm. quote that he quote Jim Rohn, and I think we've talked about it before in the 12 Pillars of Success. He said, you cannot change your destination overnight. Mm -hmm but you can change your direction overnight. Mm -hmm. So you should be intentional about your growth. You should be intentional of, about the type of person mm -hmm. that you actually want to be. You should be intentional about exploring what you can actually, what can you actually achieve mm -hmm. by the end of, the, of, of your life. Mm -hmm. And now, moving on to the second law, we try to see if we can squeeze two more laws here before before we move on, uh, for we, before we wrap it up for today. So the second law, <laughs> I love it because we go quickly through it. And I'll tell you why. It's a set of questions that you alone can answer. Adam can answer them for you. I cannot answer them for you. Your parents cannot answer these questions for you. Which leads us to something I love to say. A life that is not examined is not worth living. If you don't take time to think about your life, to think about where you want to be and where you want to go, eventually you always be at the mercy of people who know where they're going. People who know where they're going always hire people who do not know where they're going. So instead of living your own vision, if you don't have one, you'll be living somebody else's vision. And it doesn't mean that if you are under somebody else's vision, you cannot have your vision within their vision that aligns with them. I think Adam talked talk to us about it, about how Bora is a great vision. But within the Bora vision, people have their individual vision. So the law of awareness says that you must know yourself to grow yourself. Yeah. And just, just before we start asking these questions, I'm going uh, I'm gonna to just share um, a personal story here about about my personal career when it comes to when it came to this these two first law that we are looking at here when it comes to the law of intentionality and the law of awareness uh the law of intentionality primarily i mentioned that i had a, i had a full-time job 
really great salary, was flying all over the country. Um, people follow me on social media, could see like this week I'm in San Francisco, the other week I'm in South Carolina. I'm like East, West Coast, both, both of them at the same, like within a week. I was having a lot of fun traveling and I was paid really well. So I was, you know, work, making a living for myself. And at the end, I started asking and asking really myself a question. Is this all I can achieve? Is this everything that's, uh, that, that I can live for? Is this my entire potential? Mm. And I saw the position I was in. I started asking a lot of questions about growth. Mm. Where do I see myself in five years from now? Where do I, in 10 years from now? My boss had been in the same position. He only switched from there to a manager. Mm. He's been in company for 11 years. There is nothing really substantial anymore to actually learn and grow from. Mm -hmm. So I told myself now, this is now uh, the purpose I would like to achieve. Or the life you've imagined. The life, the type of life I want to I wanna have for myself. Mm -hmm. It's not just, this is not the end of the story. This mm -hmm. is not it. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started actually thinking about growth, thinking about actually fulfilling something, accomplishing something mm -hmm. by the end of my life. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at, okay, what are the other options? Mm -hmm. Do I just now go find another position, another job somewhere else that's mm -hmm. going to uh, maybe, again, um, bring me to, like, let's say, manager position or, 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 and so on. Then I also I started answering those questions. I was like, no, what are my biggest strengths? What am I good at? Mm. What am I now so good at? What are my weaknesses? And I started looking at, okay, one of my strongest things is like, okay, I, I would I'd like to be in leadership and I would like to invent and create. Mm. I had already started Bora. So I was like, yeah, maybe leadership part is something that I'm going to keep, keep growing on it. Mm. But right now, um, it's probably not something that I don't have. Mm. What I don't have is the ability to actually, I used to hear, during, especially during COVID, people were talking about expert opinion all the time. Mm. And expert opinion, even if the, whatever the guy said is like the worst you ever heard, even you say like, yeah, I can do better than that guy. Mm. But he's the guy everybody's listening to all over the world. Today, they're telling you like, yeah, wear mask. Tomorrow, they tell you only people who uh, have symptoms should wear mask. And everybody follows. Why? Because expert opinion. opinion yeah. And, yeah. And, and I started thinking about it. Mm. I made it very intentional to leave the position where I was earning really good salary mm. or even a potential other position because I had a master's degree and year and at least a year of experience. Mm. I could have landed myself into another more lucrative position somewhere, mm -hmm. but just for the purpose of fulfilling my full potential, reaching mm. the potential that I want, mm -hmm. becoming the type of person that I would like to become. Mm -hmm. I decided to put a pause on all of that, mm. on the money, on the wealth at that, at, at that level. Mm. And I was pretty young. I was like 21, 22 years old with a master's degree. Mm. Really like I, I saw the whole world in front of me, like I could make money and so on. Mm. So I put a pause on that and started and w went through a rocky way where you are like overworked, underpaid, but you are fulfilling what your most inner desire, which is basically in PhD is leadership in, in academics leadership in research and at the end of the day really changing the world and and and, and that's what sometimes we uh, we struggle with as people the easy way out we we always you know human beings we don't like struggle to be honest i, I don't like struggle if if you give me a choice between uh, the easy way out and a struggle i'll probably pick the easy way out depending on what the uh, the potential fulfillment of the thing are because i mean if if you tell me that I can get a million dollars the easy way and I can get a million dollar the hard way and there is no consequences to either choice I, I, I'll take, I'll probably go the easy way. Yeah. And most of us will probably do. No, it's nature. It, you it's see, the nature. Um, there's one principle actually, not to, not, not to cut you there. There's a, there's a principle actually in electricity. It's mm. called Ohm's law. Yep. Ohm's law says that current flow in the region of least resistance, least resistance. It's nature. It's it, nature. The same thing in fluid mechanics. Mm. In fluids, you see that when there are no rocks uh, or, or whatever, that's where you have the biggest current. Exactly. It's it, That's how it works. There's it, no resistance. And, and that's how we humans are. But the problem is 
the path of least resistance sometimes does not have the growth that we're looking for. Does even not in have, nature, directly, even in nature, yeah. You get short circuits. That, that, exactly. That's how you get short circuits, yeah. Because you don't you don't have that that resistance. And resistance sometimes the challenges that we, we face can help us grow. You know, at times it, it, it takes to quit what you're doing right now because it's not working. Now, sometimes it's working the way you want it to work, but it doesn't offer you the growth and the opportunities that you could have in the future. I remember leaving a stable position, a stable work position, where, you know, I was getting comfortable and things of that nature. I moved to another company, picking up on a position where I almost did not know anything. And I decided to go that path because I wanted to challenge myself to grow. Of course, the salary was slightly better, but it was not a motivation for me. Whichever way I would have gone, I would have been fine. But just taking that risk, leaving that job and getting something else where I was going to be challenged is actually looking back three years later, has actually helped me grow a lot more. I'm even more confident today in leaving my current position to go on another position because in my head, I'm like, I've done this before. Yeah. And so many times people get stuck in certain situations, not because they're happy to be there, but because they, they're afraid to make, to make the next move. So, there are three types of people John Maxwell talks about here in life. There are people who don't know what they want. Uh, there are people who don't know what they would like to do. He says that these people are often confused. The second type is say people who know what they would like to do, but don't do it. See, this type of people are always frustrated. The third one, he says that there are people who know what they would like to do and do it. And the third category gives them, he said, these people are always fulfilled. So if you know what you like to do, then start doing it. Even if starting to do it may mean to, of course, be responsible when you do stuff like this. Be responsible about, you may want to quit your job today, but yeah, bills won't stop because you're pursuing your dreams. Yeah. You know, they, they keep on coming. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So, so be very responsible. We're not encouraging here to take rec reckless action and say Adam and Mark said that it was okay. No, it's, it's not okay. Be responsible when you're doing this. But if you're not, moving from where you are today 15 years from today time will still pass and something he says here and i'm gonna quote he say you have to know and this pertains again to the story that i just told about my potential and my why i switched from from industry to research mm. is that you have to know who you are to grow to your potential mm. but you have to grow in order to know mm. who you are mm. And, and, and that leads us to, uh, to the 10 questions. What I'll suggest you do with these questions, write them down. As, as you listen to us, write them down. Make time to think about them for the remainder of the week. Write these questions down. Make time to think about them. And maybe at the end, you will start enjoying what you're doing. Or if you don't enjoy what you're doing, maybe you, you realize that maybe it's time to start looking into something else. Maybe it's time to switch careers. Maybe it's time to go back to college to get another degree because you want to, for example, if you say, you know, I don't like being an engineer anymore. I want to be an educator. Maybe it's time to go back to college to get something that will get you into the field where you want to do. So the first one, the first question is, and I'll ask one question. We go back and forth between Adam and I. He probably asked the second question. The first one is, do you like what you're doing right now? I asked myself that question in 2015. I was doing computer repair and it was an okay job. I remember reading John Maxwell giving an example. He said, well, if you're earning, you're earning X amount of money, it's okay. You're still in the poverty gap, but it's okay. You can move out of there. <laughs> and I look at the amount of money put in the book. That's the amount of money I was earning a year. Me who thought that I was, I thought back then that I was making some good money. I realized that whatever I was making was not going to sustain me. If I was going to get married and form a family, was not going to sustain me in a sense where I could still stay relaxed. I could still have time, enjoy my own time. And I realized it was time to change. It was time to move. And the way I moved was, of course, by getting myself an education, getting myself in a better position. So do you like what you're doing right now? Whatever is it, what is it that you're doing? Do you like it? And the second question is, what would you like to do? 
What is it that if, you want to do if, in your life? If you don't like what you're doing, mm. no, what would you like to do? And this, like, have you found, have you found and harnessed your passion? Mm. What is one thing? He call it E and E factor. He mm. say energy is, he say like, uh, when you tap into your passion, it gives you E and E factor, mm. energy and excellence. That's me with research. Mm. I am so passionate about it. When I'm talking to you about research, it's the best thing you can ever hear. I'm, I'm so passionate research and entrepreneurship. Mm. That's to me, it's my passion and it's it's my purpose. That's what I, I feel like. That's what God called me for. And and what you like to do as well, you know, Chris Mullen is the gentleman that I know that I, I really uh, admire. He said, he, he told us one thing one time he was in a seminar. He told us one thing that has challenged me a lot. He said, to really know what you like to do, Think about this. If you are not paid to do what you're doing, would you still do it? There are certain things that I always do even if I'm not paid. Adam and I, we are here doing this podcast. We don't get paid for it. But we are still doing it because we love it. It's a passion. It's something that we enjoy. The third one is, can you do what you like to do? So you already know what you like to do. Can you do it? Do you have the ability to do what you like to do? Let's say, for example... You like to become a medical doctor. At this point, do you have the ability to become a medical doctor? And then he talks about something else uh, smaller here. I'm probably going to just read it and skip over it to go on to the fourth question. He says, do you know the difference between what you want and what you are good at? There's a huge difference. The second one is, do you know what drives you and what gives you satisfaction? And the third one is, do you know your values and your priorities? And what organization value and what your organization values and priorities are? On to the fourth one. Yeah, and just before the fourth one, there's mm. a quote that I want to just add to what you just said. He mm. said that your goal should be to waste as little of your life as possible. Mm. Because people tend to waste so much of their life trying to do what they think they like to do, mm. but they're not good at it. Exactly. So uh, the fourth question here is say, do you know why you want to do what you would like to do? What's your purpose? What's the agenda here? Mm -hmm. Like uh, you say, I believe it's important not only to know what you want to do, but also why you want to do it. I say that because motives matter. Mm -hmm. When you do things for the right reason, it gives you inner strength when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Right motives help you to build positive relationships because they prevent hidden agendas and incline you to put people ahead of your agenda. Mm. And um, the fifth one, <laughs> I, really like, I, I really like this one. It, it says, the fifth question, do you know what to do so you can do what you want to do? I'll repeat that. Do you know what to do so you can do what you want to do? Let's say, for example, uh, for example, you, you want to be a public speaker, right? And you know that what you should do right now is to practice your public speaking skills. And that's what you should do right now. So if you want to be a public speaker, do you know what you should do in order for you to do it? It gives a wonderful quote here by Darren Hardy. It says that picture where you are right now in any area. Now, picture where you want to be, richer, thinner, happier, you name it. The first step toward change is awareness. If you want to get from where you are to where you want to be, you have to start by becoming aware of the choices that lead you away from your desired destination. Become very conscious that every choice that you make today, you can begin to make smarter choices that will be moving you forward. On number six, he said, do you know people who do what you'd like to do? And this is a question of network. Networking. And this mentorship. Is, exactly. And people who can help you. One thing that actually helped me from that specific part of the book, mm. he said, and uh, it's pretend to my situation right now, he say, if I create and write in a way that helps me, that, and he's, he, that, that helps people, mm -hmm. that's why he, um, this John Maxwell is talking, he said, it is because... Les Stobb, Max Lucado, Charlie Wetzel, and, and so on, and at least kept continuing, have 
he has, uh, and others have spent time with me. And time is not just because he met with them personally, no, mm. because he read their work. So mm. spending time with an, with an author or with a big name is also spending reading, time with their yeah, reading their reading work, about, about, the work. Yeah, about, about their work. And since I'm writing, that's something is like directly, am I creating the network of mm. writers, of mm. people um, mm. I can, who, who can read, I can read from? And, 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 and he says a few things before we move to the seventh question here. He said that when you find a mentor, there are things that you need to do. Be committed, be consistent, be creative, be purposeful, be reflective, and be grateful. And it's, it's very important because here's a whole law. I think it's the last, no, the second to last law mm. where he stood. The 14th, I believe, where he talked about the, the law of modeling and mm. of mentorship. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're going to get there, I think we're going to go deep into these points that he's trying to make here. Absolutely. Uh, the seventh question goes to say, should you do what you like to do with them? Should you do what you like to do with them? If you want to get into podcasting and you have a mentor, whatever you like to do, should you do it with them? And what, is, what are the things? Identify that the things that, okay, I would like to know, for example, how to be a better chef. You know, can you find a chef who you admire and who's willing to teach you whatever you would like to do with them? And on number eight here, what he says, say, will you pay the price to do what you want to do? And I'm going to keep, keep this simple. Education today uh, to get a degree, to get a certificate, hmm. you just it's, it's not that expensive, but you need to pay the price. Hmm. It can be financial price or it can be in terms of time. Hmm. You can. I was talking to my little brother, Gael, today. He's in Uganda right now learning English, and I think he, he listens to us um, with our podcast. Uh, and I was telling him, uh, would you pay the price of time? Hmm. I know you are busy. You're a freshman year. You just learned English. You are struggling. But would you pay the price of time? for you to be able to achieve what he was telling me, he want to get into AI and machine learning and so on. And he's a freshman. I'm, I'm telling him, would you want to pay? Because I can show you a lot of resources. You can go and you can become good at whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. But are you willing to pay for it? And it, it gives a little poem here. I won't read the whole part of it, the whole poem, but one statement I love here say, no, the things that are worth doing seldom come easy. You know, I, I, I was thinking about it, about, you know, my parents before dad passed away, they were married for 43 years. And one time I was talking to dad, I mean, I lived with them. I was older in my late twenties. I was staying with them in the small apartment and we were talking and I realized that building a strong and stable marriage is not easy. I promise you, it will hit your pride. He will hit your commitment. He will hit you in every way you've ever imagined. If you've ever imagined. But if you want to build a strong relationship, are you willing to pay the price as Adam say? Number nine, it goes, when can you start doing what you like to do? When can you start doing what you like to do? Are you going to procrastinate on it? We already showed you the 21 steps. I mean, Brian Tracy talks all about it. Are you going to procrastinate? Or are you going to do it? One thing he says here that I love is say, nobody ever got ready by waiting you only get ready by starting and the last question he asked on, on number 10 he say what will it be like when you do get to do what you'd like to do and uh something that's actually that i, I love this part here where because he talked about how he would celebrate and and so on but he says nothing else compares to doing what you were created to do the fulfillment when i switch again i'm gonna go back to that example when i switch from industry to research the feeling the fulfillment every time i have a new discovery every time my work is cited i get a citation a new person cited my work in their in their their article it's there is nothing to me in the world when we see when we see what the work we are doing with bora i there's nothing else that i wish i would be doing in this world than seeing a 10 year old learning how to program in C and write Arduino codes and, and see those lights coming up. And it's just there's this priceless look that they have in their face that I cannot replace with anything. Mm. And it's, uh, it's one thing that I really love about what I do. And uh, we, we are going to, uh, to take a little more of your time here. I know we're already eight minutes past the hour, but we're going to take maybe seven to eight more minutes of your time uh, while you're still on your commute or you're just listening to us to talk about this third law. The law of the mirror. You must see 
you must see value in yourself in order to add value to yourself. I think this is this is one of the most important laws in this book. Until you see value in you, you are less likely to make investment in you. Because we, we tend to pay for the things that we value most of the times. You, you like a PlayStation and it costs $600, you're going to pay $600 because you value whatever you're buying. But if you value yourself, then you start making investment in yourself. And it leads to everything about personal growth, development, and leadership here at Amanda Growth. That's what we deal with, personal growth, development, and leadership. And personal growth is not cheap. I can guarantee you that. It's not cheap. I was looking up the other day, like, if you want to go to a seminar, a real estate seminar, for example, some of these seminars will easily cost you $500. Some of these seminars will easily cost you $150 in the Congo. But is that seminar valuable to you? Is the book that you're buying, $14, $15, maybe $20 some of these books, are they valuable to you? And the only way you start improving, you start putting value in yourself, is when you realize that I'm valuable. And he gives the example of this family, of this family, this wonderful story of this lady who, was, who, who didn't believe in herself. Nobody in her family ever graduated from high school. All of them had either been to jail or to prison, had been either ad addicted to drugs or, you know, other substances. And she said that when her son was born, she looked at her life. She looked at herself in the mirror. She said, no, I don't want this life for my, for, 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 for my son. And she started working hard on getting a GED. She started, she went to college, something that never, nobody has ever believed was possible in her family. She started going to college, trying to improve her self-image because she realized that she had a lot of value in herself. So the only way to improve you is to look at yourself in the mirror and ask you this question, do I have value in me? And one of the, thing, one of the key points here, and as we are wrapping up, uh, on this, he talked about self-esteem and he talked about how self-esteem is important. And, mm. and I think that is a, it's a no-brainer, right? Every bo everyone pretty much grows up knowing that self-esteem is the most important thing that we can have. Mm. But one thing that he mentioned here, he said, uh, low self-esteem put a ceiling on our potential. Mm. And he talks about something that's actually hit me, hit home for me um, over here is because I... I I aspire to leadership. I'm, I'm a leadership student. I really love leadership. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said, he wrote the, the book of 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and what he says, he says, perhaps you want to build a large organization. The desire, no matter how great, will be limited by your leadership. Mm -hmm. It is a lead on your potential. The low well, lead. Your self-esteem mm. has the same kind of impact. Mm. If you desire, your desire is a 10, but your self-esteem is a 5, you'll never perform at the level of a 10. You'll perform as a 5 or lower. Amazing. And, and it gives a few steps here on how to, to build your self-image. If you struggle with self-image, I mean, I have, I have first-hand experience of struggling with my first image from, from the way I thought I, I looked. I, I usually uh, left, uh, joke about it when I meet a few friends that I haven't seen in 15, 20 years. And they tell me, Mark, you haven't changed a lot. And I usually look at them and say, uh, yes, my body finally caught up with my head. I used to think I had a big a big head, which when I look at my pictures today, I'm like, why did I always think I had a big head? My head doesn't look that big. And I struggle a lot with self-image. And, and here's the reality. John Maxwell says that if you put a small value on yourself, rest assured that the world will not raise the price. And he talks about a few steps here. He said the first thing to build your self-image, control your talk. First, God, what you safeguard what you say to yourself. If you keep on belittling yourself all the time, you, you keep on thinking, I'm not smart enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not handsome enough. I can never amount to this. I can never do this. Your self-talk is more important than people talk in your life. Yeah, and, and just, just there, there's something that he tells as a story here, and I have a, a, a similar story, and that's why I would like to share here. Mm. Um, he say 
when I was a child, my favorite story was the little engine that cooled. Why? Because I found it so encouraging. I used to read it over and over, and I used to think, that's me. I think I can too. There's a TV show for kids, actually. When I used to hang out with a lot of kids, I was still learning English, and I was um, I was living with a family, and um, I was just hanging out with kids, and there's a, a TV show that was called Seed the Science Kid. Hmm. And uh, every time at the beginning of the show, he's, he, he, they would ask, do you know the kids who wonders to know everything about everything? And the ki- and, and and everybody will point to seed like that seed and and to me I, I, I was seventeen year old so I wasn't a kid but I was I was I, I could say like that's me and every time I speak I speak about that story how I found my way into science it's that the story because I kept repeating over and over to myself that I wonder I am curious to know everything about everything mm. and at the end of the day of course I don't know everything about everything yeah. But it inspired me to be a scientist and to start asking some of the biggest questions in the world. And and I can can look into our little studio here. There's a, a saying on 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 my word that I actually framed and told you something. Some confession that I, I I did I believe for almost a year every single day. I repeat to myself that I'm intelligent. I'm a leader. I'm I'm well spoken. And repeating this stuff eventually caught up my brain, and my brain started believing in them. Positive confession lab. The second thing, and I'll move all through them a little quickly here. We're already out of our time. The eight minutes have expired. So the second thing to uh, to improve your self-image is self, uh, stop comparing yourself to others. The third one is moving beyond your limiting beliefs. As a matter of fact, a, a good uh, a good quote here by Charles Schwab says that when a man when his man has put a limit on on what he will do, he has put a limit on what he can do. So if you limit on what you will do, you have put a limit. If you think that I cannot do it, you've also put a limit on what you, you can do. The other thing is add value to others. It helps build your self-image. I think we talked about it at the beginning, how great a great fulfillment that you have when you see you help someone accomplish something. The success that they have brings you more joy, sometimes even more joy than the person. Uh, the fifth one, it talks about do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing. It helps you build your self-image. The sixth one, Practice a small discipline daily in a specific area of your life. I think practicing a small discipline actually makes you feel good when you accomplish it. Like challenging myself to do 30 push-ups a day for 30 days in a row. So every time I do that in the morning, I'm like, okay, I've done my 30 push-ups. I can do everything today, <laughs> you know, and it's very encouraging. So the, se- the seventh one, I think Adam talked about it already. Yeah. Uh, celebrate your small victories. And then he talks about the, the eighth one, embrace a positive vision of your life based on what you value the ninth one and which i believe the last two one the last two ones are practice a one word strategy so pick a word that best describes you and say that to yourself over and over again and let that word be be positive Uh, when i read this book the first time uh, i think the word that wrote for me was creative so every time i thought about myself what is mark allen i'll say i'm creative I know I can sit down and bring idea out of nothing. And and that encourages me all the time that I think about it. And then the last one, which I believe is one of the most important ones, take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility for your life. We live in a world where we always tend to blame others. We always tend to reject the fault of others. It's the way your parents raised you. It's the way your neighbor talked to you. It's the way your teacher, the things that your teacher told you. And we always tend to think that it's somebody else's responsibility. My question to you is, what is your responsibility in the part of your life that you're playing? In in the movie of your life, what is your responsibility? You want to know? A hundred percent. You have full responsibility of anything that happens around you. If it happens to you, you may not you may not have control over what happens to you, but you still have control on how you respond or how you react to what to what to what happens to you. It's with that that we're finishing up today our episode. Thank you for having stayed with us here for an hour and maybe a quarter, a third of an hour, maybe an hour and twenty minutes here. 
Uh, a few things that we, we wanted to, to make sure of, of course, if you're listening to us on YouTube, uh, do not forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. If you have suggestions, uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Yes, we're still working on our video. We're still getting the right materials so that you can not only listen to us, but also see us. If you are listening to us from Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Amazon Music, thank you so much. I think we hit about 460 download yeah that, that was amazing and somebody from argentina argentina tuned in from austria i was looking at today i was like austria argentina there's this other country actually um that that i saw that is um i think it was argentina austria people of course people from uganda like a lot of people from uganda um tuned in and then we had we had a few people from this one country that um that i'm checking right here but it, it, it was really amazing that and i saw even randa from, randa coming up randa now. coming that's, up that's actually well, well, randa climbing <laughs> up the the ladder here there's one country actually puerto rico that's amazing somebody listened to us from puerto rico so really thank you thank so you. much all over the world to gracias. everybody who listens gracias, to us. gracias. Like something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> merci beaucoup for all of you who are listening out there we really we really ap ap appreciate you and 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 if you want to sponsor a Boris student for we have two vacation camp right there's the first one that's already going on the second one is starting from uh august august 8th yes august 8th so if you want to sponsor a child you want to change the life of a child maybe inspire a child to become an engineer uh, let us know reach out to us at info at the unboundedgrowth.com info at the unboundedgrowth.com of course we are on instagram follow us uh, we always have motivational quotation out there questions that challenge you and if you're struggling to learn how to journal how to ask questions reach out to us we are willing to have a one-on-one -on -one session with you to talk with you and to explain to you this process of going through it and i'll conclude with this quote there are three great days in a man's life Mark Twain said that there are two great days in a man's life, the day is born and the day he discovers why. But as I was reflecting on that today, I realized that there is actually an, an additional third day in a man's life. There are three great days in a man's life, the day is born, the day he discovers why, and the day starts doing what he's born to do. Why don't you start doing what you're born to do today? And I guarantee you one thing, the benefit we outweigh the struggle. Adam, anything? No, that's all that we had today. And thank you so much for tuning in. And we hope you can come back again next week to listen to us and to grow together. And you guys are always amazing. God bless you and have a great remainder of your week. Bye-bye.